gathering with us here. So uh, welcome to our new home, actually. We've only been in our space since mid-July, actually just in time for construction to start happening right in front of us, so, um, so we can understand a little bit of the impact that this project has had on the community, though certainly not nearly as much as some of the other businesses and residents have experienced over the, or the duration of the project. So the, our celebration um, certainly, though, very much appreciated. Um, and while we've only had a small um, kind of time here, we've been a community resource for more than 30 years. And so for us, where you're standing and where you're gathering today is actually the distribution area for the food bank. So when we were in our old space, everything was in a very small church basement, very, very small. We wouldn't have been able to fit merely a quarter of you here. So it's exciting for us to be able to have this many folks gathered in our new home. Um, the distribution space that you're in today is where we actually uh, work with around 1,100 families each week when they come in through walk-in food bank. They're taking home between 30 and 40 pounds of gro groceries with them. Um, those help support them for a couple of days. And so for us, um, you know, access was really, really important. And that also includes access in the community. 75% of our customers walk, bike, or bus to the food bank. And so we definitely appreciate the improvements that have been made on Roosevelt, including the new bike lane. So with that, I want to introduce uh, the Seattle Department of uh, Transportation Director, Scott Kubley. Thank you. OK, well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, this is a really uh, exciting day for SDOT and for the community. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a project that's going to help us achieve Vision Zero, which is our vision for zero serious and fatal traffic collisions by 2030. Uh, and this is a pretty cool project because I think it, it shows that we can be nimble as an organization and responsive to the community. So there's somebody that works for me, a woman named Sam Woods, who I'm sure a lot of you know. Uh, but when I first got here, she came to me and she said, hey, we're just about to start a paving project on Roosevelt. It's a really important connection in the U District. Is there any way we can work in a protected bike lane on it? And so, you know, sort of right, she caught it just right at the last minute. And so we were able to work it into what would have been just a regular paving project. And so we were able to make transit improvements and bike improvements and pedestrian improvements all while uh, giving a nice smooth surface to drive, ride a bus and ride a bike on. And so Kyle Rowe here, uh, who is now managing our bike share program, uh, worked really, really hard with a lot of other people at SDOT to make this happen. And in doing so, we toured the street with the people that live here and work here. Uh, we talked to the families that are here about what their needs are from the street uh, from a safety perspective. We worked with retailers to identify uh, locations where we could add on-street parking. And we actually also developed a residential TDM program as a result of this project. It's a rapidly growing neighborhood. People were concerned about loss of parking. And so what we try to do is come up with a residential uh, travel demand management program as well. Uh, in planning and preparing for the project, it wasn't just about design. Uh, also, construction impacts happen with every construction project that we do. So we, we wanted to minimize the impacts that we had. And so we went with phased construction uh, as we went down the corridor so that we can make sure that uh, we were in and out of the street as quickly as we could in front of businesses. Uh, so major construction's done, uh, which is really exciting. So people can start using it now. Uh, we still have a, to put up a few signs, uh, and then it will be really, really done. Uh, but we're really uh, thankful for all the support. I think it's great that on a sunny Saturday, or a, sun, a rainy Saturday, not a sunny Saturday, a rainy Saturday, we can get a, pe a bunch of people up off their couches, which is where I would be uh, on a typical rainy weekend day, uh, to come out here and celebrate. Uh, so thank you guys very much. The next person that I'm going to invite up is uh, Kathy Tuttle with uh, Seattle Neighborhood Greenways.
Hi, I'm Kathy Tuttle with Seattle Neighborhood Greenways, and I want to tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Adam. And actually, when this story starts, he was just a baby. Just a baby that couldn't talk, but his mom and his dad said, we want a cooler planet, and we want streets that are safe for us. So Adam's mom and dad said, what can we do? And they started a group called University Greenways. And they really wanted to have safe streets when the, a new project got, uh, got put in here. It was going to be a paving project. It was just going to pave the streets. And his mom and dad said, wow, we want a cooler planet, and we want uh, safer streets for us to walk and for us to bike. And so what they did is they said to all the people in the University Greenways groups, let's go out and talk to all the businesses. Let's talk to the people who run the library and the people who have the food bank and the people who have restaurants and say, you know what? Safe streets are great for business. We'd love to have a safer street here on Roosevelt, wouldn't you? And a lot of the businesses said, yes, we want to do that. A lot of the people who lived here said, yeah, we want to be able to walk and bike to our local businesses. So Adam's parents and all the people in University Greenways, and let me tell you who they were too. So it was Bob Edmison and, uh, let's see, Max Turan, Forrest Baum, Drew Dressman, Megan Horst, Scott Bokogian, and actually there were a lot of other people too, but those were the people that went out and talked to lots of businesses and said, can we have a safer street here? And then they met the new person who came to the Department of Transportation, and that was Scott Kubley. And he said, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we can have safer streets here. Maybe we can make a cooler planet when we're putting in this new paving. And so that group also talked to the University Greenways group. They also talked to a group called Feet First. And two of the people from Feet First, Lisa Quinn, and Jim Davis did a walking audit of the place. And then they also talked to Cascade Bicycle Club, and they had some great people who went out and waved signs and handed out postcards. Um, two of them were, uh, that were really busy doing that uh, were Brock Howell and uh, Jeff Aiken. So they really helped out a lot. And so all of these people from all of these different community groups got together and the Department of Transportation said, maybe we can find a little more money to make a cooler planet and safer streets. So all of those people, all of those community groups got together and they made a safer place and a place that's going to make a cooler planet too. And it's just the start. There's lots of places where we can have safer streets and lots of ways we can make a cooler planet. And it's all done because there was a little boy named Adam, who's now five years old, and because there are kids everywhere whose parents really care about a safer street and a cooler planet. Some of those kids are here today, Lila and Clara and Roland and Hank and Dylan and Eleanor and Jillian and Jack and Orion, and all of those kids are going to have a safer way to walk on Roosevelt and a safer way to bike on Roosevelt when they get older. And we're going to have a cooler planet because of it. Thank you very much. And I'm supposed to introduce Shafali uh, Raganathan. So, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Shafali Ranganathan, I'm the Executive Director of uh, Transportation Choices Coalition. Um, and I'm here really to say congratulations to you all. Uh, what a beautiful project. I mean, streets belong to everybody, to people who walk, to who, people who bike, take transit, and drive. And for too long, we have spent our time designing streets that only work for some and not all. So today is, is a celebration of the community. Uh, Congratulations to SDOT for getting this project done and to the advocates, all of you in the room who spoke up, who went on walks, 
who, who spoke up for your community and your neighborhood to make sure that this street was safe for everyone. Uh, to Cascade Bicycle Club, to Neighborhood Greenway, Seattle Neighborhood Greenways, to Feet First for continuing to push the envelope on what makes for community and what makes for connected streets. Thank you for all the work you do. Um, our vision at Transportation Choices is more options for you to get around, whether that's walking, biking, taking transit. Um, and that is starting to bear fruit in this neighborhood. You have uh, protected bike lanes, safer sidewalks. Um, Light rail is on its way uh, soon, just a few blocks away. And really, I think what we're seeing today, I hope to see in many more neighborhoods all around the city where community comes together to design uh, streets that work for all. Um, thanks so much. Uh, with that, I want to introduce um, my friend and longtime advocate for Safer Streets, Council Member Rob Johnson. I've got some escorts with me this morning. Thanks, everybody. Um, before, uh, before we close out, I just want to say thanks to a couple of other folks who are here. And uh, sorry that I didn't tell you in advance that I was going to recognize you. Elizabeth, thank you so much for all the great work that you do as, as the ED of Cascade Bike Club. I'm really, really grateful to work with you on a daily basis. Karen Coe, would you raise your hand real fast? Anybody who needs uh, a secret unlocked at the city of Seattle, Karen Coe is the person that can unlock all those secrets. You are an amazing advocate, and we can't thank you enough for all the great work that you do. Elizabeth, will you, Elizabeth McCrory from UDP, will you wave? Thank you, Elizabeth. The UDP does a lot of great work in the neighborhood around making the neighborhood cleaner and safer a lot of business development opportunities in the neighborhood. And then finally, I want to recognize a legend, a Hall of Famer, Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis, please wave. Chris is the founder of our Seattle Farmers Market Coalition and was just inducted into Seattle Magazine's Hall of Fame as one of the 50 legendary people here in the city. You guys are great. I, and this project really uh, wouldn't be possible without the work of all those fine folks. Um, and you'll notice that all of them are women, and I think that that's a critical piece to the success of this project. There, there are a lot of folks who were behind the scenes in helping us get to today. And today is really critical because the city is really growing at a very rapid pace. For those who don't know, we are adding about 40 people a day. We're growing by about 30 jobs a day, but we're only building about 12 housing units per day. So the U District is a really critical piece for us to be successful in continuing to make this a place that works well for everybody. Um, the University District is poised to have a great new light rail station in just a couple of years alongside the Husky Stadium station that just opened in March. That Husky Stadium station is now uh, the home to a doubling of our light rail ridership. We, got, we went from about 35,000 people riding light rail a day Whoa. to now about 70,000 people riding light rail a day. I know, wow, it's really great. And, and we're poised to make some really big zoning changes in, in the neighborhood that's going to make the neighborhood a lot safer, a lot more welcoming, and a lot easier for a lot of folks to still be able to live here. Um, I, I'm one of those people that really doesn't like giving speeches, but I will tell you, this is a really critically important project for me and for my family. I spent most of the last four years walking these two kids along a very busy street five blocks to catch the city bus to go to preschool. Now I do that with this one. That street, 65th Avenue Northeast, is one of the most dangerous streets in the city. This street was not far behind it as one of the most dangerous streets in the city. We're making progressive steps to make our city safer for everybody, regardless of whether you walk, bike, or drive a car, or take transit. And I'm really proud of the work that we're doing to make the city a safer place for everybody. So without further ado, I believe Maddie Carlson and the rest of the folks as part of the Kittical Mass program are going to cut the ribbon and get this thing going. So thanks, everybody, for all your great work.